I saw Sispus. Sispus? What's going on? What's going on, Mr. Tariq? Hey, I'm good, Mr. Sispus. No, are you a, you're an American patriot, right? I am an American patriot. That's true, sir. Love it. Now, where's your family from originally? My family is from Europe. They what? come from primarily England, uh, partially from Germany, a little bit from Denmark, a little bit from Sweden. Mm-hmm. And I think from from the history lessons I've gotten from my grandparents, my family has been here since about 1790s to 18 early 1800s. Mm. From England? They had to be here from England, right? Well, uh, my DNA tests show that I am broadly Western European, uh, primarily English, then German, a little bit of Danish and Swedish. Right, now Part of that we... could be because a lot of English people are also partially Danish and Swedish, you know, taking into account Viking invasions back in the day. But if, if all that Denmark stuff is in there, where did they must, they had to have immigrated at what point? When did they immigrate here? Um, we're not 100% sure, but I do know on my father's side of the family, it was late 1700s to early 1800s. Okay. And then on, on my mom's side of the family, they're mostly German, and I think they came here in the 1860s, 1870s. Right. Okay. So, so what is on your mind as far as the top? Well, I just wanted to engage you in a friendly debate regarding the notion that, you know, foundational black Americans mm -hmm. built America. Right. So if we're being intellectually honest, of course, mm -hmm. nobody can deny that slave labor was a big part of the American workforce. Mm -hmm. But when and it comes down to it, if we're being realistic... Go ahead. The vast majority of slave labor was in the agricultural fields. It wasn't in the industrial aspect of America. When you talk about building America, right, are we talking about just agriculture and farming? Are we looking at overall production? Um, are we looking at... You, I mean, what ex what exactly, under what framework are you making that sort of an assertion? I'm, I'm making the assertion because it was not just the agrarian society. We did the agriculture work. That's, that's pretty well known. We did a lot of the engineering, the architecture. If you go to different plantations, especially in the South, they'll tell you the black people who actually were the architects and who actually built it. We know we had to do the labor to build it, but it were it was black people who were the architects of it. There but were how can how can we argue that the vast majority of black slaves were illiterate, didn't have access to education, mm -hmm. but yet at the same time were somehow magically the architects of all of the industrial innovation that occurred in the U.S. I feel all. like that's very... Well, 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 no, no, I don't say that. oh, no, come on. No, 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 no. Let's not frame okay. it. Let's not frame it sure. that way. Well, I'm just saying the foundation of it. The foundation of it. We're the foundation of it. We didn't build all. We didn't. I'm not saying... Like, like who? Who are some like famous black architects that were creating these long-lasting... Uh, architectural innovations in the South that we uh, have. Now, most of the to people, think for most, oh, I'm going to listen now. Most of okay, the, most of the black people we were doing things because we were enslaved. They wouldn't give us credit for it for the most part. You you understand that? So we were owned by somebody and we built something. Well, the slave master would get credit for it, but we were so great and innovative. You did have black people who were enslaved. People like Horace King, who was a very instrumental person in designing a lot of the bridges and buildings in the South. You look him up. 
also in DC, you had uh, the antebellum architecture or Southern architecture in general is Greek inspired. A lot of uh, Greek inspired. It's <laughs> you know. Go ahead. You're saying what? It's Greek inspired. It's Greek inspired. French but, colonial. But, you know, and then you also have like the French colonial style of architecture in Louisiana, which of course comes from the French. Um. And you we, have. Okay, hold on. Now, the neoclassical you, architectural styles or the Greek. Let's slow slow down. Okay, let me let me slow down. Let's go back to the Greece thing. You say if it's Greek inspired, but Greek inspired is Greece was inspired by Africa. Greece just did carbon copies of what was going on in Africa in ancient times. You see, right? You got to acknowledge that, right? Turn your microphone on, sir. Let's turn the microphone back on. Oh, sorry. I don't know how that happened. That, yeah, I, I, when I, you know, I had to mute you because you were going on, and I had to just kind of interject that. But like I said, okay. right, the Greeks were getting stuff from from Africa. They did that's carbon. Patently, copy. That's patently false. How so? Well, you tell me first of all where how the Greeks copied Africa. Um, they went over there, saw all the stuff, and did the exact same thing. That's how they did it. In under in what period of time? Um, in ancient times, when Greek was popping, because Greek like had, in what ancient, Greek, what particular period of ancient time? Well, Greek went. Greek hasn't been popping for a thousand years. So the last time Greek was popping, a thousand and something years ago. That's what I'm talking, sir. Well, I mean, like, so when you talk about ancient Greece again, ancient Greece, there's various periods of of ancient you know, Greece, but right. saying that there, 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 I mean, the notion that Greek, the ancient Greece was modeled based off of Africa. Right. Is patently false and not based in any sort of well-respected or accepted literature. Like um, provide me a, provide me a source that, that shows that. Sir, the Greeks went all up into alexandria uh-huh and all they went, the well alexandria do you, do you know what alexandria was named after alexander a guy, a guy named great. alexander the great right but he named it after himself after they went in and conquered it and got correct it was the macedonians that built the great uh, the it, it was the macedonians that built the great library in alexandria it wasn't there it wasn't like the greeks it wasn't like the Greeks went into this well-developed society. I understand where you're going to go next into this notion that somehow, you know, the Greeks learned from the Black Egyptians, which is right. also patently false. Um, so where did the Greeks? Because learn? no, because those those civilizations developed independently of one another. That's not true. It is absolutely true. That's not true at all, sir. That's literally not true at all. They got all of their game from the the Egyptians. Greek didn't have anything popping until they started learning for the from the Egyptians. In fact, there were about twenty five dynasties in Egypt before they even had literature out of Greece. The first document out of Greece is what? What's the first book out of Greece or out of Europe? So I just say Europe. What's the first book? I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't want to lie. Iliad but... and the Odyssey. The Iliad and the Odyssey. That's the first okay. piece of literature to come out, and that came again at the when when Egypt was in its twenty fifth dynasty. They've been around for thousands of years, sir. So black folks were popping in Africa a long time, and when Greece got themselves together, they saw went over there and saw what was going on and learned and took it back to Greece. No, I mean, again, we, we don't have any evidence to say that the Greeks were some sort of underdeveloped society. But again, uh, Greece is underdeveloped. Look, look, we're th th this, I mean, you know, because we can talk about so many ancient civilizations, whether we go into ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, ancient Chinese civilizations, the Aztecs. There were multiple civilizations around the world that were being developed independently of one another. 
that at the end of the day have nothing to do with the foundational black Americans because even if even if we do grant this argument that you know somehow the Greeks were inspired by Africa, which they were is 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 it is it po- of of course is it possible that through throughout ancient times you know a Greek might have learned something in Alexandria and brought it back to Greece? Sure, certainly, but you cannot attribute all of the architecture, all of the knowledge all of the culture, all of the music, et cetera, of ancient Rome, ancient Greece, to a civilization in Africa that is completely divergent from the culture and civilization of Greece or Rome, or the civilizations that ended up developing in Europe separately from Africa, right? We don't see too many, we don't see too many parallels because these civilizations developed independently. Until later on, of course, the Romans took over Egypt, influenced it in the way that they did, you know. But but, but they were taking it was, sorry, that, they were that taking, aside. They, that aside, they, they, they were no 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 no. They were taking stuff from Egypt, bringing it to Rome. They were patterning. They they patterned a lot of stuff. They were taking the obelisk. All of that stuff is in Rome now, sir. What, what are you What are you saying? So what what you're saying? You're just saying is this is almost on white and I say so. That's just not true. What you're saying, sir. The the Romans and the Greeks were getting a lot of their technology and sciences and um, higher learning from the black people in Africa. That's why they are the only civilizations that really had it popping in Europe at that time. No other parts of Europe was popping. And truth be told, you want to go into the, the Romans and those are the those who would later on be Italians, you know, that the ancient Italians were the Etruscans and most of them were black. If we want to go there, sir, hop on, sir. Turn your microphone on, sir. Turn your microphone on. Yeah, you you keep muting me anytime I make an argument that's no, contradicting no, because, you. No, 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 because you you're talking over me. We don't we don't do that, okay? When you say no, something, I'm trying to I'm trying to be as respectful as possible right. and engaging. So when, you say something, when you say something, I want to address it. You say something and I want to address that. I want to, you know, you just say a bunch of stuff and then run all different sorts of ways. I want to address everything you're saying, you see. But like mm-hmm. I said, um, you had the Etruscans out there that were in ancient Rome and Italy, and there, and, and these were mostly black people. You can go see their artifacts in the British Museum. So you're still dealing with that black element, sir. You see. And now going back to foundation of black Americans, um, when the European brethren tried to build this nation on their own, they failed repeatedly. Why couldn't they just pick cotton if it was that simple, sir? So, again, I'm going to try to answer a couple of your things. Go ahead. We kind of agreed that these civilizations, the Romans, the Greeks and the various civilizations of Egypt for a very long time developed independently of one another. Which is interesting. Uh, I do agree with which you is, that the Ro- that the Romans... What's that's that? Not, that's not true. It wasn't independent of each other. It wasn't. It, I mean, it was. Other, otherwise, there, there would be a lot more parallels between those societies, which we clearly know that there was not until the Romans you know, invaded Egypt. Yeah, Egypt got in, in the age of Cleopatra, who is a white woman from Macedonia and Greece. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Egypt was invaded by a lot of people. It was weakened. That's true. By the time the Romans came in, the Hyksos came in. I mean, a lot of people. It, 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 it was an ancient old civilization. So, yeah, the civilizations it's, get... But it's true, again, which, is, which is why... As, like for example, when black people try to claim the culture of Egypt, it's intellectually and patently false. Considering, yes, were there black people at certain points in age, ancient Egypt? Yes, but there were different periods of time in Egypt, and through mixing of various, you know, whether it was the Arabs or as you have already conceded, the Romans and the Greeks and the Macedonians, 
Egypt changed and that civilization continued to develop That's differently. Great okay, great point. You just made a great point because you say that black people um, try to take credit for what was going on in ancient Egypt. And we'd, we'd look at them as other black people, but you're saying we shouldn't take credit for them because we are different than them, right? I think that modern was- day African Americans, foundational black Americans, likely have very little ancestral connection to ancient Egyptian civilizations. Okay, now, with that being said... Like, you would have more in common... Now, with that being said, you have zero connection to Roman and Greek culture. Why are you claiming it? Uh, I'm actually... No, that's that's actually false, too. Um, Sir, according you not- to, uh, 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 Well... You, you, Again, you, you, we'd have to. It, it's a long debate on whether no, modern day Greece. You are not Roman, nor are you Greek. I'm actually part Greek as well. I don't believe you. And um, if you're Greek, it, you're it's part, true. My, my, I do have part of my uh, genetic ancestry that says I have family that goes back to Peloponnesia. Uh, sir, that some them DNA tests. Now, I, I got Greek, if that's the case, in the damn DNA test. They say everything. I mean, and I have Albanian, an Albanian, which is Illyrian, um, so, so you, in that same region. So if you have a, a 1% ancestry somewhere that's near Greek, nah. Because then y'all people complain. So, we point to a percentage of Native American ancestry that a lot of foundational Black sure. Americans have. We We have a lot of ancestry to this land, sir. But that my, my but that is my point exactly is that most foundational black Americans have more in common with modern day Europeans than they do with any ancient African civilization. And that's unquestionable. Like so. you and I have more similarities in our DNA than you will ever have with any ancient Egyptian from the Kemet civilization. How so? That makes zero sense. Uh, what like for, first of all you, you know Af- africa is a pretty genetically diverse continent mm-hmm. and african you know african slaves that were brought to this country and other you know parts of the north american continent don't necessarily come from the part of egypt where you know, the part of Africa where the Kemet civilization existed. The the blacks of the Kemet civilization are not necessarily the same people as, you know, an African from uh, a Zulu tribe. These are completely different. They're not black. True. They have, not they, they have, they are black. They come from the same continent. Okay. But they are okay. not. They are not necessarily the same people. They are separated by thousands no, of years. No, they're not. Africa and it's not. They're not landlocked by anything. There are no land boundaries. There's nothing stopping. Yeah, anything. except this one thing called the Sahara Desert. And and there's a something that one thing called the Nile River that goes down into the mouth in the the center of Africa. So the desert. You don't have to go through the desert. You can if, that, if, that, if that was true, there, sub-Saharan Africa wouldn't be so completely divergent from northern part of Africa. They're That's not. why when we say sub-Saharan, oh, they are very divergent. No, are you kidding not. me? I, no, they're not. Well, you, are, you, you, you would be in a very minority of scholars who, who would say that. From, what's stopping a, a black person from going to, to northern Africa? Uh, now in modern day in the age of glo- globalization, Hell, in not time, much. In but ancient, throughout in, throughout no, the no, ancient no, time, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. The Nile River has been there for millions of years. What's stopping them? What stopped them from going from southern Africa to northern Africa? And the the mother of Egypt was was Cush. They said they came from the south part of Africa. So, turn your microphone on, sir. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so again, the, the Sahara Desert served as a great no, barrier. No, no. no. Uh, well, you, you look, you, you muted me. So now let me speak. 
No, because we're talking about the Nile River that goes south, south to north. You don't have to go through the Sahara Desert. And it wasn't always the you're, desert. You're, you're talking about a period of time when the vast majority of people hardly l moved more than 100 miles from their town or village. Third, you're talking about a, you're talking third. about a period of time when life was short and yeah. brutish third. and people woke up. Stop. Slow down. I'm catching every lot. That ain't true. People left Africa and circumnavigated the entire planet. People left Africa and went everywhere. What are you talking? You're talking about your European brethren. They weren't going too many places. Black people were traveling all over the place, sir. That's why there are so many black Aboriginal people all over the planet. You see? Sisyphus, turn your microphone on, sir. All right. Well, thank you for unmuting me. I, it seems like you mute me anytime that I make a point that you know, no, no, is you, difficult for you to refute. So here's the thing. No, what, okay. you, you, I'm muting you when you're talking over. You say something that's false and then keep talking. Yes, I'm going to stop you and bring clarity. See, we don't do the Fox News thing where y'all just get a microphone and just start yelling a bunch of stuff that ain't true. Right here, we slow roast everything. We analyze everything. If you say something, you're going to have to stand on business and verify and prove what you said, sir. You keep saying a bunch of stuff that's emphatically false, and I'm debunking everything that you're saying that's false. That's how that works. We don't do what I might not say so here. So like I said, there's no such thing really as a sub-Saharan African because nothing was stopping black people from the southern part of Africa and the west part of Africa from traveling to the east part of Africa and to the north part of Africa. There were no land boundaries. And that whole thing about the Sahara Desert, that wasn't stopping anybody from communicating with culture, language, lineage, bloodlines. It wasn't stopping anybody. The Nile River is right there, sir. And you can just go down. That's the, that was a super highway of Africa and the other rivers. They traveled all over. So yes, there were ancient Egyptians who they went out and moved to certain parts of Africa. They moved to the West. They moved to the South. They moved all over. You understand? Shout out to my dude, Mikhail, the knock and the yam of the West so, Africa. Go ahead. So, okay. So again, in a debate, and I think so far, I've been very respectful, and uh, I've too. allowed you to speak, but me you never, too. you never let me make my point. So no, now no, no. I'm going to go back to that. On? No, I just don't want you to say anything false. Okay, so then then let me say one last thing no, because no, we, no, we no. never I want you to say what you want to say, but say it and then let's break it down. Don't say so, one thing. Sure. And run, no, no, then, I'm, I'm that absolutely. Looks that looks absolutely. Deceptive. Say something and then don't unpack it. Okay. Not, All right. Well, to... let's unpack this. Unpack it. How about the fact that the vast majority of mummies, when you look at mitochondrial DNA, show the, the vast red majority red of them have zero sub-Saharan African DNA. Oh, zero. Are you doing a mummy thing? <laughs> uh, okay. So th you said that you want to look at evidence, and I am right. telling you that your revisionist version of history is emphatically false. Yeah. Are you on the red head mummy? The mummies are really white people from Europe. Is no, I'm not saying that they are white people. I am saying that there's a distinction between sub-Saharan Africans and Northern Africans, which are have their lineage from ancient civilizations that arrived from Mesopotamia. Okay. Well, let, okay, let me break it down. So you're saying that there is no sub-Saharan DNA because the desert stopped the ancient Egyptians from procreating with the black people in Southern Africa in that desert got in their way. Is that what you're saying, sir? Um, I'm saying that those civilizations in sub-Saharan Africa and the civilizations of Egypt were developing in parallel to one another in a divergent time. Egypt was 
technologically significantly more advanced than their perhaps long lost distant, you know, cousins in, in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, eventually not, there were not really, you know, there were Nubians that made their way to Egypt. Many of them, there's plenty of evidence that shows sub-Saharan Africans being in positions of slavery in Egypt. But you but, do know, you do know there were throughout history, there were wealthy and, and powerful sub so-called sub-Saharan African societies. Of, co you do of course. Yeah, of course. Okay, got it. Just, of course. Just because, yeah, of course, they existed. It did not does not mean that they were the ones that built all of, of Africa. You know, Africa is, is like I said, it's a pretty genetically diverse country. I mean, yeah. continent. All my black, just like Rome and, is, Rome and Greece. Y'all take credit for Rome and Greece, but outside of Rome and Greece, Europe wasn't worth a damn. Wasn't nothing popping in Europe at that time. It was a bunch of barbaric tribes running around in Europe outside of Rome and Greece. That's why you can only hang your hat on Rome and Greece, sir, right? I mean, that that's... That's true to a certain extent. What That's extent? True to... What extent is it not true? No, I mean, the true is I, not again. True. Most of the world, most of the world, until the past two thousand years, was pretty underdeveloped. And not really. not yeah, really. that yes, really, because when when the Europeans started actually circumnavigating the globe the vast majority of the peoples that they encountered were hundreds of years behind them. So whether smart. again, now, what, what the, the ancient what, Chinese I, civilization? I mean, we, there's only, there's only so many civilizations that we, we can point out to, right? Mesopotamia they, being one of the oldest Europeans being some, long distance children of people who migrated from Mesopotamia into Europe, uh, other individual civilizations from the Caucasus. But again, the, the point of this was, and I, we, we got sidetracked. Um, the reason we got into this was that we were talking about foundational black Americans, you know, because we, we could get into an argument over Egypt. There's Egyptologists that have been that are having this debate, you know, right. constantly. A ancient Egypt is a very old and complex civilization. Right, and as a but foundation, American right. American a civilization, foundation, I don't have to run to Egypt because we have we've we've done a lot of phenomenal things here as foundational Black Americans that other people have not done. You sure, yeah. sure. But here's the thing: if you are being intellectually honest. Right. You can you can point out to the great things that foundational Black Americans have done to this in this country, right? Without claiming that they are the root cause and the only group that is responsible for building America, because that's patently false. Without foundational Black Americans, there would not be an America, sir. There would be an America. It would certainly be different than what it is now. <laughs> Because they would have done it already. The white supremacists failed when they tried without us, sir. Oh, well, here's here's the thing. When that's true or not true, sir? Okay, but no, that that's patently false. Because then prove, the, then prove it. I want to hear you prove what they sure. built without foundational Black Americans. This guy is an idiot. Oh, okay. I'm an idiot, right? Um, m most most of you people that have never read, you know, any history outside of your Facebook and YouTube research, Go ahead, calling me an idiot. Um, now, I want to know what did mm -hmm. the supremacists build here in North America? Why, why do you have to say white supremacists? What did that's their word. Europeans that's their word. build? No, no, no. Because I, Europeans, that no, no, that is no, true. You, the people no, no, no. that built this country were primarily white European men. They called themselves white supremacists, sir. They built an ideology of white supremacy. They were the ones who made the laws 
using the terms white supremacy. That's their word. That's why I use white supremacy. They created okay. the thing that black people would be subjugated. Thomas Jefferson wrote in his book, um, Letters to the State of Virginia, about white supremacy. Abraham Lincoln talked about he's going to assign supremacy to the white race. That's their word. So that's why I use it, sir. So okay. it's not an effort. I'm using sure. what they Sure. Okay. Well, so here, here, here's the thing. They, what did they build without us? Um, I mean, everything, <laughs> literally everything. The titans of industry were who? John D. Rockefeller. Oh, okay. They came uh, oh, they J.P. Came Morgan. Came you're, later. You're, you mean the, the J.P. Morgan from the J.P. Morgan Chase Bank that made their money off slave labor? That's where these banks were getting their money from. Uh, I mean, see here. Here's the thing, right? You, you like, no. I mean, slave, what, slave. Like, you're acting as if white Europeans were the first ones to engage in slavery. Oh no, 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 no. Whereas slavery, going, what, what, for example, what, 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 exists no, now in Africa. No, don't do it all because now when we starting to get lit up, what they, 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 they look at that? They had slaves over there too. No, 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 no. We're talking about the white supremacists. No, we're not going to do the hot potato. Hey, look over there. We're not doing that. Okay. I want to know. Well, here, here, here's the thing. Let's talk stats then. No, 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 no. I asked a very specific This guy keeps moving the goalposts. I, I, I want a simple question. I want to okay. ask a question. What did the white supremacist build that we didn't have anything to do with in the foundation of America? First, let's start with the actual founding of the country for starters, mm -hmm. creating the constitution that is the law of the land to the day, creating the system of government that is the in government that, that we utilize today. In that constitution, they were grappling on and on about black people in the constitution. And there's still constitutional issues as it relates to black people now. When Ben Franklin and all of those guys locked themselves in a session to discuss privately some things in the Constitution, most of what they were talking about was black people. Because the name of the game was to stop us from taking over. Because they knew the ingenuity and the temerity that we had. They wanted to make sure that we didn't take over this country, sir. It, it was quite the opposite. It wasn't because, I mean, have you ever heard of The White Man's Burden by Rudyard Kipling? Uh-huh. The view of of whites towards African Americans wasn't that they viewed African Americans as innovative, ingenious, you know, smart individuals that were going to take over the country. Quite the opposite. They viewed African Americans as subhumans. That's why they justified slavery as okay, as, as, okay, we as immoral as it was. It was okay, because so that was their view. Slow down, okay. So a subhuman, you don't have to have a Jim Crow law for a subhuman for an animal. You don't have to have slave patrols for an animal. You don't have to make it illegal for an animal to read if you think somebody is subhuman. You understand what I'm saying? there would not be such economic deprivation and intellectual deprivation if you thought that this group of people were just subhuman because you could give us the best of things and if we were so subhuman, we just wouldn't know what to do with it. The fact that there was deprivation, they knew what it was. But so yeah, that's a, they, don't, they don't believe that. That's of, of, cor of course, those, lo those laws were meant to control the slave population because they realized that they were importing millions and millions of slaves. And, of course, they foresaw the possibility that the slaves could re lead a revolt, right. as it ha had happened in many colonies. Yep. And but state, that like was, the like, the practices... Go ahead. The practices they were engaging in was nothing new when it came to the practice of slavery. These were the type of laws and systems that had been practiced as long as slavery had had existed. The Arabs would literally castrate the, their slaves to prevent them from reproducing. Right. But they African, created, African they slave created, owners they, they, would do the same. They created a racially based slave system here that had never been done anywhere on the planet before. And they did it in a way where if 
you were born, you were born into slavery. It was a whole different animal over here. And the laws and the oppressive subjugation, they knew that we were not subhuman. That's just the justification that they would use overtly. There was always the threat that we could take over the nation. That's always okay. that threat now. So, okay. Again, we're going to get sidetracked, and I don't want to be accused of moving the goalposts, right? Right. right. But so you asked me, what did white men build? And my answer to that has been, they built the foundations of this country. They created this country. They were the ones that primarily bled to create this country as an independent, true. sovereign entity. Um, how so? Uh, um, the Revolutionary War. There were black people fighting and some of the, the biggest and what, revolutionary what, war. What, yeah, of course, sure. What percentage, what percentage of the Revolutionary War did black Americans make? I'm not sure, but a lot of us yeah, like not a lot, not a it lot. Was, it was it was some significant ones who were fighting in the Revolutionary War. Sure, no nobody's <laughs> denying that black nobody there were there there definitely and was the entire two, units and, of and the Civil War too. Absolutely, absolutely. In yes, fact, black black it, black Americans bled next to white Americans in the fight for this country's freedom. But the vast majority of that was on the shoulders of white European men. The philosophical foundations of this country was white European men. How so? That's why this country was based on Western values, not African values. What were Western values? Because Europe was a crap hole at the beginning of this country. Really? In 1776? The Vene I mean, the Venetians... <laughs> We're going, we're going back to the 16th. We're going to the 16th. Sure, the 16th. Europe had already gotten through the period of enlightenment. That, that the, was the period of European and the, 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 the period of the period of enlightenment and, and the Renaissance that was had the put more. Europe vastly ahead of any other continent and, and, and civilization. Moors. That was the Moors who did that. And that was Spain. They got, that's why Spain <laughs> came back first. Because of the enlightenment that the Moors brought in. And uh, then, okay. Do you like? For, okay. First of all, a, as an African, you cannot claim that the Moors were also blacks. We know that's not true. Really? They were. Moors? They were North Africans. The Moors look more like oh, your okay, average well, you day. The, uh, boy, man, if you don't stop moving the goalposts, as an African, they weren't African. They were North African. I mean, come on. Listen they were to not Sub-Saharan African. Okay, there's no such thing as a Sub-Saharan African. There is. There's no <laughs> there such is. Thing. A black person is a black person. There's no such thing. Unless we're, now, if we're going to get into the ethnic thing, yeah, I'm a foundational black American in modern times, but black is black. More was a descriptive term, sir. There were Moors from all over Africa, not just North Africa. Well, we have a pretty good historical record of what the Moors look like. They and look like Arabs. Um, then why didn't they call them Arabs? That, uh, that, that was the term. I mean, why didn't, why no, didn't Europeans the word, call themselves... The, the Why didn't the Europeans Arabic. call themselves the Whites? They called themselves the English. They called themselves the Celts. They called Word. themselves the Welsh. They would have just called them Arabs. They called them Moors. That Moor was a descriptive term. Uh, the, the the term Arab is, is more of a modern etymology. It's not. It, it wasn't something that was used in the 1200s. And then again. Then why did they? Okay, the period of the Moors they, was three four hundred years before the era of the. No, oh, no. Why did they call non-Arabs Moors? They were calling black people Moors who weren't even Arab, who, or who were not even Islamized. You had St. Benedict, St. Matthias the Moor, St. Benedict the Moor, St. Maurice the Moor. These were Christian people who were jet black that they called Moor. They, they had nothing to do with Islam or Arab or Muslim or anything, sir. Moor was a description term for black people no absolutely not then why, Moor, they, then why, a, why did they describe the moors as jet black the, um you what who who described them like one one guy who <laughs> called really? them black because back no. then philosophy because back then europeans 
who had not encountered blacks, anyone that looked darker than, than them was considered a black. That's it, a a modern-day Algerian or a Berber would be considered true. black to them. So they just made it up? They just saw these people and said, oh. No, we, no, we the black. term, nope. If you, if you look at the origin of the Moors, okay, the term was used to, as a way to refer to North African Berbers. Berber and, is language based. That's and not the Berbers Berber colonized race. Spain in the eighth century. Berbers not a race, sir. The, in the seventh and in the eighth century, in seven eleven, when the Moors went up there, there's a contemporary document called the Song of Roland that was made in the seven in, in seven forty or something like that when the Moors were there, and you had people describing what they look like. And in the Song of Roland, when you can look it up, they said that these people were black as midnight, black as pitch, nothing white except their eyes and teeth. You couldn't get no blacker than that, sir. Even the coat of arms in certain parts of Europe that shows the Moors, mm -hmm. it shows them as jet black people. You go to museums and they have artifacts from medieval times showing the Moors as jet black people. Now, are the libraries and the the museums lying about the description of these people, sir? Um, no, I, I think that revisionist Afrocentric scholars are lying about the description of these people. Okay, well, by I'm cherry not, by cherry I'm, picking by cherry I'm, picking I'm by cherry picking certain certain things. I'm talking about their contemporaries, sir. I'm talking about the people in ancient times or in medieval times who drew the images of these people. As yes. The Corsica flag, they got black moors on it. You got paintings and museums going back to the medieval times showing black moors. Sure, you can you Are can they, cherry you can cherry pick dark skinned moors versus the vast majority of Moorish history that depicts the Moors looking like almost our average day Arab individual. That's not even true. Most of the pictures of the Moors are the depictions. If you Google more, you see a bunch of black people pop up, sir. More in black was interchangeable, so much so they had a term in Europe called black as a Moor. It can't get no blacker than a Moor, sir. Uh, more, Moors are Berbers. Sir, they're that's Berbers. Just, they, that's are they are North African Berbers. That, I mean, that, that's uh, again, right. it's... It, 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 in a discussion over... Sir, sir, there's a reason why the Spanish and the Italians are darker than all of the Northern Europeans. That's because of the Moors' bloodline, sir. There's a reason why they dark. not the just the Moors. It's also the Persians, and it's also their geographic location. Oh, don't give me the Mediterranean. <laughs> it is true. Oh, the Medita God, Mediterranean God, people are... Mediterranean people are more dark skinned. And oh, if God. if it was if it was purely a genetic uh the Mediterranean sun don't give you lips and ass. All right. They got lips and ass in southern Italy and, and Spain. The sun don't give you all that, sir. Let's not do that. They <laughs> the, the sun don't turn your hair black. You're, it, I mean you your Europeans a, Sir, the sun don't turn you from a blonde to a brunette. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, most Europeans are brown haired and they have no genetic. I mean, myself personally, I have brown hair and green eyes. Mm -hmm. I have zero African DNA. Which I don't believe, but go ahead. I, I don't. I don't. I have zero <laughs> African DNA. No. So if you have zero African DNA, where are you an Aboriginal of? Europe. <laughs> no such thing as a white Aboriginal of Europe. No such thing. I think the notion that all of humanity came from Africa is disputed. Um, I think that again, you're you're talking about you know the dispersal from Africa it happened hundreds of thousands of years ago. So, so the, the, trying to trace 
that back is kind of a moot point. I'm trying to see how you, uh, an Aboriginal of Europe, and when they did DNA testing in Europe, the Aboriginal people up there were some black folks called the Grimaldi people up there in Northern Europe, black people with woolly hair. Y'all Google that family. So, so how did black people who were, you know, apparently the most learned scholars circumnavigating the world, uh -huh. present in every part of the world, uh -huh. eradicated from the world in literally every region until they were shipped as slaves. We weren't That just seems so unfathomable. Why, how were we eradicated? What are you talking about? I mean, th this notion that blacks are apparently uh, not only native to Africa, but uh, also original to Europe, original to uh, the Americas. Yeah. These are the kind of asinine claims that are made by Afrocentric scholars who ben use each Bob. other's who use each other's. Stop it, sir. Okay, so if that's not true, <laughs> why are there black aboriginals in all of these places now? There you can are. go to Asia. Yeah, you go to Asia and there's black aboriginal people not mixed with anything with big afros, black skin, sir. All over Melanesia, Polynesia, um, the Philippines, they called them Negritos when the Spanish went over there and saw them. You have the I knew right. over there, Japan. So that, that that should explain to you the, the the notion that Europeans considered anyone who wasn't white European looking as Negrito or black or more. They had terms they had terms to describe dark skinned people as dark because what? it was very binary for them. It was white or not not white. <laughs> Right, because these people were black. They were black. Uh, again, no. Uh, <laughs> and I think most, Yeah. I, I, I think 99.99% of uh, scholars would disagree with you. But again, getting back I'm, to the, well, get it, let, let's I'm, get back to the original I, point. I mean, eyesight is eyesight. When we see some people who look black, eh, they're black. Y'all called them black. Y'all called them negritos and niggas. And y'all called them the same thing you called us. So y'all, it's a real weird thing with, with people in the dominant society. Y'all label everybody black, and then when we acknowledge the global blackness, well, y'all not really, really black. He's kind of black, kind of sort of black, black light. Then y'all start tripping. So y'all have like this racial schizophrenia. It's a real weird uh, dynamic with you guys. It's real interesting. But as we know, the Moors were black. There were black civilizations here, but the Europeans mm -hmm. came to here. There were mosques and stuff over here. You had civilizations over here. And it was, they brought Moors with them as tour guides and translators with them, sir. So, where in the United States? Yes, and what would become the United States? The, mm -hmm. the Spanish, they brought uh, Moorish translators with them. <laughs> what is that? That's either true or not true, sir. Um, I don't believe I've ever read anything about the Spanish bringing in Moorish translators in the American colonies. Yeah, Christopher Columbus, his ships were owned by Moors. The Nino brothers owned one of the ships. The um, Pedro Alonso Nino was a black Moor. He's very well described by history scholars. In fact, where Columbus is buried and his, his men are buried out there in the Dominican Republic, I think, they did some DNA testing on them and saw they all had what you say, sub-Saharan DNA, all the people that was with them. And then they got real quiet about it. There were black translators coming with the European um, explorers. And they needed black translators because there were black people all over here already. So the what language were these Moors translating into? There were Algonquin languages. They were <laughs> speaking Hebrew. They were speaking Arabic. They knew Don't some of the native languages over here. One more in particular, Estebanico, who came with some European explorers in the mid-1500s. And he was one of the first so-called foreigners to explore what would become the United States. He was leading the expeditions. <laughs> This is very well documented. It's black you, 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 there is no well documentation of that. The fact that you argue that there was 
Arabic, no. Arabic language is spoken no. in. No, slow down. You're not going to just say I'm white and I say so. Family, would y'all like to Google what I'm saying? Estevanico the Moor, who is very black, his his story is very well documented. No, you don't get to brush that off and say, yeah, nope. No. Uh, I'll give you a chance to, doc to, to research it yourself. Just Google it. Google Estevanico the Moor. And they'll tell you all the language. He spoke a lot of native languages here. How would he speak those languages unless he must have had some free contact with the people here, sir, which a lot of black people did. That's how they knew how to move and shake around this area, sir. It was foundational. Oh. The people who would become foundational black Americans. So I I'm get. So I'm <laughs> guessing is, is all of your research based on like Ivan Van Sertima? No, I mean, no, 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 no. Estebanico, his stuff is from European books. The Europeans documented his stuff, sir. I, I think I, you I, should look you should look at at a book called Robbing Native American Cultures. Oh um, yeah. which is that. which literally discusses all of the points that you're making, uh, which come come they all come from Vancer uh Vancer Tima's Afro uh I forget what the what his book was, um, but it's pretty much all of the revisionist, patently false. Okay, uh, well, let's do. Let's go to the white guys because I can quote white guys. Let me give you a name, and I want you to Google this name. Look up Alexander von Wootnow. This is a white man. All right, this is Alexander von Wootnow. He wrote several books. One of his books was called Unexpected Faces in Ancient America. This is a lily white man from Germany, out of all places. He moved down to Mexico, and he has a book talking about all of the artifacts from thousands of years that shows clearly Black people with classical African features. And he wrote books and books and books about it, has pictures from private collections all over the place. He talks about how the Smithsonian and all of these museums try to hide this information. He's one of the few honest white men out there who would tell the truth that black people with classical African features had been on this land for thousands of years. Another mm. white man I want you to look up, Constantine. Okay. Look up Constantine Rafinesque. He was um, a French polymath who came here to the United States in the 1800s. This was another mm -hmm. guy. Who told the truth? The white. I'm, I'm, I don't. We don't have to do Van Serto. I'm giving you white men. He talked about how America was initially populated by wild Negro tribes, and he went on and on about all of these black tribes that were all over North and South and Central America. These are white guys saying this stuff. I don't have to go to the so-called Afrocentrics. That's. I mean, that's all. That's all patently false. Okay, patently so you white. False. Black folks There's are lying. Literally, there, uh, so again, why, cherry why picking. These, why, why would these white people? What what would they lie for? Why would there's literally there's literally no credible evidence at all that has been peer reviewed and presented that refutes the notion um, that Native American tribes that were living in the Americas were pretty much had been living here for a few 10,000 years without any contact from outside of the North American continent. Wait, you're the, saying the first me, group of the on, first on, group wait, of wait, people wait, 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 wait. So you're saying that the Native American and Aboriginal tribes here had no contact with anybody until the Europeans came. Until the Vikings actually came. They were the, that that was the first group Oh, that not we the, have Eric, evidence. Eric Lee, Eric Leif Erickson. No, oh God, they didn't really. They were up there by Greenland, which you could take a damn. You can uh, ride a log over there to North Canada. That's a nothing burger, and they weren't interacting with the Aboriginal people over here. Leif Erickson and those guys weren't interacting with anybody over here. Zero. Yeah, I mean, literally, like literally, literally, there, there's a, I mean, 
there 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 are entire thousands of pages of this called bad history that break down all of these arguments that you're making. Leif Erickson and them dudes, Eric the Red, all of, they didn't interact with the Aboriginal people over here. They weren't. They stumbled across a little island somewhere, allegedly, if it's even true, and then stumbled back over there to Greenland somewhere. Yeah. No. I, I get, you, even, even, even if you, again, it's hard for us to be able to present oh, evidence oh, to one okay. another. But okay, but no, it's not. Sir, all, ev- everything that you're pointing out is literally the same to... things that you sir. guys accuse. Sir, I'm talking science. Luzia woman. Down in <laughs> There's field. no science. So, yes, the, science. They no got, science. They got no woman. respect. No respect. Sir, sir, Luzia woman. It was a black woman in Brazil. They said that's the oldest find of a human being in the Americas. It's a black woman. Luzia woman. Is everybody lying, sir? Just everybody lying but you? You're just saying everybody's a liar. The 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 scientists from the 17, 1800s, they're a liar. White man Von Wout now who studied this stuff, he's a liar. The scientists in Brazil finding a black woman, they're liars. So you cherry so you cherry pick like three sources that have been debunked <laughs> while it. refusing hundreds of thousands Who of other sources. Them? Who debunked them? While uh, literally Who like a- Afro revisionist Afrocentric. Who debunked them? Nobody debunked them. Literally Who? all of the all of the literature on, on American history, which you is very in depth. Them. Like Af- this is this is literally Afrocentrics no, engaging in the same type of erasure of America. This is just, you're trying to do I'm white and I say so. And that's just not going to work here. We're not going for the I'm white and I say so because we have platforms now where we're not beholden to I'm white and I say so. See, y'all used to do that I'm white and I say so jazz because you controlled media outlets where information can be disseminated. You can't do that now. So I'm white and I say so don't work. Everybody's listening. They can Google these names that I'm telling them and they can see for themselves. They can see the work of Von Woot now and the artifacts that he has and these jet black people who were here for thousands of years and they done done carbon dating and they got scientific proof of this. They can study the work of Constantine Rafaganis, who was a, a very well-respected white botanist, and he himself said that there were black tribes over here. You can go and check out um, the writings of European explorers like Vasaro, who came over here, went to the East Coast and said he saw the same people over here that he saw in Ethiopia, meaning Africa, black people with dark skin and woolly hair. This is what these people were saying when they got here. You can look at old maps from the 1500s where they're showing jet black people with afros on them over here in the Americas. Everybody's not lying, sir, and that's not cherry picking. You understand? You can go get books by. Jack it, it is it is cherry picking. All all of the all, all of these authors you're pointing out to have been debunked. Not one has been debunked. Literally, Literally every single one of them has been debunked. That's, that's um white not say so. Like, where, okay, what what Who what happened them? to these African deb- tribes? Where where, where are where where Who where deb- are these? Who yeah, debunked them? Start start with National Geographic to keep it nice and easy for you at an eighth grade reading Sir, level. Sir, you're just saying stuff. You just okay. Saying stuff, so sir. so okay. So then, what what happened to these African tribes? Why, why do we have? Why do they we have? Enslaved. They got they enslaved. Ha- they are en- they are enslaved. They got so, enslaved. So why got- do we have very well written historical record? of the Navajo, the Cherokee, the Iroquois, and, and all the other hundreds of other Dude. Native American tribes, but somehow black black Native tribes were erased from the historical record. Why, sir, there were thousands of tribes in North America. Literally thousands. Okay. Thousands of tribes. Why do you think they only talk about the so-called five civilized ones? Only five were civilized. Why do you think they say that? 
who who says only five were civilized? That's when when the literally. when the Europeans came here, There's the vast majority five civilized tribes. That's literally a term that the white supremacists said. It's five civilized tribes. That's what they said. No, white supremacists called all natives savages. <laughs> but what but they called all they of them call, savages. They called them civilized. They didn't, they said these were five civilized tribes because these were the ones they could marry into and get to infiltrate all of the other tribes and turn some of those people in. They had deals and um um bills with some of these red native tribes to turn in some of the black natives, sir. That's what the whole civil, the, the whole Seminole War was about. They were trying to get the Red Seminoles to turn in the Black Seminoles, but they were all working together. And the Black Seminoles were the military arm of the Seminoles. You understand? It's a, it's a deep thing, sir. <laughs> what's what's funny about that? What did I? What, what was the lie? It, it, uh, like all of it? <laughs> How so? The no, the the notion that the Seminoles were working with the white man to turn in. Uh, they didn't a work. Black, no, no. They didn't. They wanted black to. Africa. They didn't. That's what the civil. That's what the Seminole War was about. They didn't do that. Like the 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 Creeks and the Cherokees, they didn't do what they did. The Seminoles said, "Hey, we're going to stick with. We're sticking with them. We're going to work. We we rocking with these brothers because the Black Seminoles were the military arm of the Seminole Nation. So they didn't do that. You're that's what you're, li you're literally blackwashing history. How so? Where is the historical record of these tri of these black native tribes? All over, sir. The so name native one. Tribe, name the one. Where are the where are the artifacts, sir? The Yama where are the artifacts? Where where is the historical record of their societies existing? Every where is their language, sir? Where's the African language? We don't speak African languages. Where's that language? Uh, the, because there's no African language. There's Ubuntu, there's Josa, there's hundreds of African languages. And there were the hundreds of Aboriginal languages, but when we got caught up by these white supremacists, they forced us to speak their languages. Right, they forced that's, you to speak. That, that's what happened to the languages. That's what happened to it. They got okay. a lot of, they got but, a lot of black people who were already here and they mixed us in with some of the African brothers and sisters and that became the foundation of black Americans that you see today, sir. But, no, again, so, again, absent any sort of historical record not true. that has not been debunked, like literally the only literature review on any of this stuff is if I go to a hotel website, I just named a bunch of white people. So I can name more Leo Warner. I can name white people who say this, sir. I can be here all day naming white scholars and authors and scientists who say this stuff. I don't even have to touch the black stuff yet. I can. I don't even have to go there. That's too easy. You understand? Are you here, sir? Are you here? Oh, did he bounce? Okay. Okay, he bounced. He, yeah, he he saw that the I'm white and I say so wasn't going to work. No, that's that's not going to work. I'm telling you, I'm giving you books. I'm giving you scholars. I'm giving you scientists. And his only response, no, -uh. no, we don't do that. That don't work no more. That's not true. It, 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 they've been debunked by who? National Geographic, he's just saying anything. Just saying anything. You think that I'm white and I say so stuff don't work. And you can't try to pass it off as Afrocentric. I'm naming white people. I can name you just book after book after book after book of white people who sat here and said that there were black people here for thousands of years. Yeah? And you guys can look it up yourselves. This dude has, he read from the white supremacist playbook. This is why these people are so easy work. The whole Berber lie. The Moors weren't black. They were Berbers. Berber is not a race. That's like calling somebody Hispanic. Hispanic, there's black Hispanics, white Hispanics. The Moors were jet black. That's why they called the Moors. This dude was contradicting himself left and right. 
See, that I'm white and I say so stuff don't work. And I'm telling you from my own experiences, I've been over to parts of Asia looking at these jet black people with Afros who are aboriginal over there in Malaysia, places like Thailand and places like Bali, all of these places. We're just over in Fiji. These jet black people with these beautiful Afros who tell you that their ancestry comes from Africa. They'll tell you that over in Fiji in places like Melanesia and all of those places. Yeah? That I'm white and I say so don't work, man. We, we out here. We out here in the streets. We out here in the grass. We out here in the ocean. All right? Let me get black intellectual in here. Black intellectual, hop on, sir. We in here almost a thousand people in here. What? What? Black intellectual, hop on. What's going on, brother? What's up, brother? How are you? I'm doing well. It seems like you're doing well as well. Yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to give you your flowers and appreciation because it seemed like the man. I mean, if anyone was listening, I hope I hope y'all were paying attention that uh, the brother Tariq was giving a lot of names and a, and a lot of citations. And like you said, the white man was just saying things, making claims. I didn't hear one scholarly citation right. from that man. Right, right. He wasn't naming nothing. He was just, everything with him was, I'm white and I say so. Name a scholar, dude. Give me a source. Give me a reference. You know? Let's get Major, what's your name, sir? Major Clarence Anderson. Major Clarence Anderson, hop on. Major Clarence Anderson, you good? Yes, sir. Brother Tree, can you hear me? I can hear you. What's up, brother? Yes, sir. First of all, man, it is an indeed an honor and a privilege to talk to you. I've been listening to you. I've been actually corresponding with you over the years via your old email. But but two things to your last conversation. I mean, if, if the young uh, suspected white supremacist wants an example, you can look at uh, General Thomas Sidney Jessup. And you know, I, I went to I went to military war college, and, and so we talked about this guy. And, and in his own diaries, he talked about. And this gentleman, this general was put in charge by General Andrew Jackson. And in his own diaries, he says, "Look, I don't know why we're talking about this as an Indian war. We fight Negroes." Exactly. I mean, I mean, he said that. I mean, in Christopher Columbus's own journal, uh, he noted, um, and these guys can look it up that you know the the natives were talking about that you guys travel the same routes as a dark skinned people who traded in gold tip spears. And so if they want examples, you got General Thomas Sidney Jessup, you got Christopher Columbus and, and brother, I'll land my plane quickly. And a lot of these guys claim that they're, that they're Christians. And so if they want to have a good reference point, hell, even the, the Bible talks about all, 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 uh, all everything originated in Africa. If you look at the book of Genesis, uh, specifically chapter 10, it talks about uh, Noah's sons. One of them was uh, Ham and the sons of Ham were Cush, Mizraim put in Canaan. This is uh, Genesis chapter chapter ten, verses six. And if you look at the genealogy of those of those of uh, those brothers, Cush was the father of the Sudan Sudanites. Mizraim was the father of Egypt. Uh, put was the father of Libya, and and Canaan was the was the father of President Israel. And so, if these guys are, are quoting that they claim that they are Christians, well, then the the Bible, which is the foundation of the Christian faith, talks about all life descended in Africa. So, brother, just thank you for. Uh, enlightening those of us and uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. We're riding with you. Take care, bro. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much. But yeah, this dude, um, man, he was doing I'm white and I say so left and right. Well, when he started talking about the the natives here didn't interact with nobody until the Europeans. Really? Dude, come on now. Boy, you just, go, that's I'm white and I say so on another level. There's so much so much documentation of people interacting with the natives here. This is this big continent. You think they weren't engaging in trade? Family, you got Moorish books where you had Moors coming back and forth over here. That's why they brought Moors with them. This is why they had translators with them. And also, family, there's a river current 
in the Atlantic Ocean that goes from the west part of Africa, and you can hit that river current, it'll take you right down into Central America. You don't even need a sail. It'll just take you right there. As a, a certain time of year, that current will hit and just take you right there. And then at another time, it'll take you back over to Africa. You think folks weren't hitting that current? People had been coming over here for thousands of years. The only credit he'll give is some damn Vikings. When he, That Viking bullshit. Dude, stop. The Vikings allegedly hit some little ice patch up in northern Canada, allegedly, and didn't do nothing and, and went back. You know, that shit is a hop, skip, and a jump from Greenland. That ain't nothing. And they try to put a bunch of extras on them damn Vikings. The Vikings didn't do shit. They got lost and turned around and took their musty asses back up there to Greenland. And ate some sauerkraut and... <laughs> And and pick headlights out their ass. All right. Let's see who. From the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all natural foundational Black American based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror Root. Our unique blend, enriched with this legendary root, offers 24-hour protection, rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. 